Hey guys, welcome. We're back again to yet another episode. Just checking the volumes on. Hey, you doing well? And the game's been postponed. That's a good start. I've only just noticed that. What a load of old tosh. Well, we were supposed to be having our first game back at the Greenkin Stadium against Wimbledon, but that was cancelled. So I thought, well, we've got Crawley next. That's now been cancelled. So we'll be showing an away game against Barnet next. And then I don't know what's after that. Let me just get through this. Do you do? Let's have a look what we've got. Two away games and Crawley at home. Right. So you're going to get three games in this video, all being well. So, last time out you saw us beat Bolton 5-0. Four goals from Mella and an own goal. Now, remember I said Bolton were gone. Unless a miracle happens. Well, a miracle has happened. They are fighting back, my friends. Still bottom, still 17 points adrift, but they are fighting back. And who is the miracle? Is it Guardiola? No. Is it David Moyes? No. Is it Conte? No. Mourinho? No. Wenger? No. It's Sammy Lee. Sammy Lee is their saviour. And he has really turned them round. I know this series isn't about them. They've signed Corby Moore Raffles because he was a miserable little shite so he's gone to Bolton but since they were slain 5-0 by us and then 1-0 by Wrexham they've been on a good run they beat league leaders Cambridge 2-1 they beat Fleetwood 2-1 they drew 1-0 with MK Dons they beat Oldham 3-0 they beat Braintree in the Cup 2-1 they drew 2-2 with Barnet a 1-0 win against Kiddy, then they lost two, but then they've come back again and it was a, a nice 1-1 one, one draw, a 2-2 two, two draw and a 1-0 win. So they are fighting back, they are going to give it everything they possibly can. But anyway, back to us and our season. I'm going to show you some highlights in a minute. A uh, 4-2 win over Scunthorpe, then we were top and we played second place Cambridge and we drew six all. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pause it while I set this up to do 3D highlights of the goals because I haven't seen them in 3D so I thought it would be cool we could check them out in 3D. So bear with me guys and I'll get this set up ready to roll. So here comes the 1 nil. Mella from a long ball from Forrington made it 1 nil. So I was like no. Oh. Oh shit, that's the microphone knocked over. Very sorry. Then, the second one. Grant, Brocklehurst, Atkin, Davison saved, but Atkin followed up and plopped it into the net. I am very sorry for knocking the microphone over. That was very bad. Then, they hit us on the break. Booming with a booming goal to make it 2-1 Taylor Inswinger Roger Johnson made it 3-1 I know there's a bit of lag so I apologise but um, then it was made 3-2 from Parr's free kick then they came on the counter attack again with Redwood to Walker I oh, don't be knobbo Walker sends it in and Dean Hammond thumped it home for 3-3 three, three. so then I was like okay fair enough and pretty much straight from the kickoff we come flying up the pitch Mella into Wiley bang Anthony Grant oh no it wasn't straight from the kickoff sorry my apologies this next one was straight from their kickoff so no ball's got the ball, plays it back to Gregory, Lee, Woodland. It's a long pointless ball. Barry picks it up to the keeper. At this part I thought four all was coming. But it wasn't. It was 5-3, Greg Taylor against his form one of his former clubs. So then I thought, okay, we're in a good position here. This could be uh 
nice simple for us but then came 5-4 Is that five? Yeah, five four. Then came for us six four, and I thought we're done. We are. We have won this. I was wrong, clearly, as you all know the result from the kickoff. Cambridge get their fifth of the game. Redwood with a nice little finish, and then I expected this after that. We get a corner, their keeper saves it. Johnson with a good chance to win it for us. Firth clears it down the pitch to Walker, who uh, was dispossessed by Berry, but he gave it straight back to them. Poor from Berry. Walker was, I thought that was going to be a penalty, but then it came Woodland with one hell of a wallop to equalise it at six apiece. And that was just, what a game that was. What an absolute beaut of a game. So, yeah, go away with your match highlights now. I don't need to see them. <laughs> so, a six all draw. Then we beat Fleetwood. Oh, I didn't show you who scored, did I, for those? Uh, Wiley and Mella with the goals in that one, and a couple of own goals and lots of things. Yeah, we only got, yeah. well, an own goal even, sorry, not a couple. Uh, then Fleetwood were beaten 2 1, Oakley and Wiley. Then a 1 0 win against Exeter, thanks to Mella. We lost 3 2 in the FA Cup second round to Scunthorpe, Atkin and Mellow with the goals. We beat Derby 1 0 in the Northern semi final. So we've got Tranmere in the Northern final, first leg and second leg, which is basically the Johnson's Pate Trophy semi finals, really, if you think about it. Uh, but Atkin with a the goal there. Then a 3 0 win at York, Mellow Stead with a rare goal for us these days, and an own goal. 2 1 win against Oldham, Turton and Wiley. Then we lost 2-1 to MK Dons, uh, Mello with our goal, and a 1-0 draw last time out against Rochdale, Atkin with our goal. Um, so yeah, we've got Tranmere in the first and second leg of the area final. Transfer-wise, there's been a, uh, just a couple of ins and outs. Why did I just do that? I have no idea. Okay, so outwardly, we have got rid of Chris Brown. I think I've already showed you all these, actually, most of them. Um, the recent outing is Corby Moore to Bolton. Inwards, we have brought Dan Stewart from Bangor City. So he's coming on a free from them. And this new gen, or regen, whichever way you like to say them, was created same surname and first name as my nephew I could but I didn't I've never noticed him before I just had a look to see how many Howarths there were in the game I spotted him and he was born in the same year 1993 and he's, so he's now 26 and he was a former Sunderland player so I thought I'm going to sign him so I used the editor and you know I said to you guys that I would tell you whenever I used it for whatever reason the only reason I'd be using it for was name changes finance changes but I hope you're not too disappointed in me I used it to put his date of birth the same as my nephew's so this is now my nephew in the game and he even looks a bit like him he does look like what I'd imagine my nephew to look like when he's 26 to be fair so that's worked out quite nicely um, he's got a few good so his free kicks are brilliant uh, he's quite quick he's pretty aggressive to be fair um, but you know his reputation you know what he's expected to do isn't great he's expected to only be a Skrill Prem player so that, that's fine you know that's, that's fine by me he's only made a couple of brief substitute appearances for us so far but yeah I just thought oh this is too much of a good opportunity to uh, pass up but I do have another nephew who's interested in football Jack so I think I might when I get a new gen come in when he's a regen come in when he when he would be around the right age I might put him in as a goalkeeper 
he's a bit wacky he's a crap outfield player to be fair uh, but he's quite good in goal so um, I might choose a new a regen to uh, turn into Jack that would be pretty cool uh, and then I, I don't know if it's still in this game I don't know if it happens every time but I remember a couple of people had their son appear I am recording still yeah I had this horrible feeling there um, a few people have had their son uh, come in as a regen you know the uh, when the son gets populated on the game I know you have to go in you have to do about 20 30 20 seasons plus though for that to really kick in normally or it might just be 15 16 seasons uh, I don't know really to be honest I know I haven't had it happen to me unfortunately but um, you know I don't know if that still kicks in so that'd be pretty cool if uh, if it happens but I'll be interesting to see if it does happen what he looks like because um, if he comes through looking like JJ Okocha I'd have a few questions <laughs> but uh, yeah we'll see so we're going to play Barnet in the first game we're third now they're fourth um, so it'd be a tight tight game and then we've got Kidderminster away who are no easy target either so it's going to be a difficult run for us and then Crawley at home all things going well it doesn't get called off again our first proper home game of the season that will be if it goes ahead let's get through all this stuff do do right I'm going to pause it for a second guys and get to the game okay so this is the team I've gone with uh, Foz in goal low Turton Oakley and Taylor in defence, Arco and Young Dan Stewart midfield, Taylor Davison on the sides, and Mella and Wiley up front. We do have Berry, Brocklehurst, and Grant out suspended at the moment, so um, hence the reason they're not involved. It's going to be difficult against Brighton for our key men in midfield, which is normally Brocklehurst and either Arco and Grant. Brocklehurst's really come on. Um, still getting suspended through bookings and sending offs which I'm trying to beat out of him with fines him and Grant I think Grant went one period where he didn't get paid for about three months so uh, whether he's learned, learned his lesson slowly I don't know doesn't seem to be as he's suspended again but we'll see so Barnet the Hive Go on, you hit him with it, son. Go on. Right, so... Why have I turned on the match fully to 3D? That's not what I meant to do at all. Sorry. I just meant to put the highlights on 3D. Silly boy. So, here we are at the hive. Let's see how we get on. So, last time... I did a video, I can't remember if it was on the last episode or if it was I was recording some audio over one that had knackered up. But I spoke to you about um, people doing keeping up with the Joneses. Get him, Mella! People doing keeping up with the Joneses. This needs to be sped up just a little bit. Um, and, oh, it's disallowed. And that all was led up to, you know, we started off by telling you guys that. Uh, that we had, we brought a freelander. Oh, get him, Mella. That one surely will count. Surely will count. <sighs> Fly in my face. Oh, beautiful love. Look at that. He is coming on leaps and bounds, that kid. Um, yeah, I remember I was talking about uh, the, we, you know, the, when we went and had to buy a new. Um, four by four for my wife's horse trailer. Well, yesterday um, she got a phone call at about seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, it was Friday the thirteenth yesterday, so part of me is not surprised something happened to us on Friday the thirteenth. And uh, it was one of the it was the other woman who has horses down the yard, who well, has a horse down the yard with us. Um, Jasper, my wife's big horse um, get him Wiley she let him out and uh, he kept collapsing on the floor 
and uh, you know lying down and wasn't himself he's normally a big he prances around he's a clumsy idiot always messing around playing joke you know joking around with the other horse if horses can joke around together uh, and so my wife had to go down there she had to ring it she the, the whole of her company close at one on a Friday they all work eight till five so they can finish half days on Fridays which is pretty cool oh that was sloppy very sloppy um, anyway so she took, you know rang up and told me she wasn't going in because she had to sort it out um, and she got down there and he wasn't looking great he was laid down and we had to call the vet or she had to call the vet so I had to carry on and go to work um, I'll talk to you about my work in a minute knobheads um, she uh, she had to take the time off work call the vet and the vet came down and had a feel around and luckily it wasn't colic we lost a horse to colic a couple of years ago um, it's when their stomach twists and uh, if if they're not old, you know, if they're too old, then it, you know, it's no point in operating because the operation will probably finish them off anyway. And uh, he is getting on a bit now, so if it was colic, we wouldn't have had much choice but to have had him put down, disposed of in the right way. He wouldn't have gone to the glue factory. I guarantee that. Um, or to dog meat factory either. Um, but. They're going to equalise in a minute, aren't they? Um, so he came out, he had a feel around, and luckily, like I say, it wasn't colic. It turns out he was so massively constipated to the point where he couldn't walk. And we don't know what caused it. We're, we're assuming some hay that he'd eaten might have um, blocked him up a bit. He may have managed to get hold of too much hay or something and blocked him up. But they gave him a sedative. Uh, and some um, medication to uh, relax his muscles and loosen up what was blocked inside and within a few hours he was skipping around happy as Larry farting his ass off but the reason I'm bringing this up and saying this is vets I think make up their prices as they go along because that cost us 250 quid for just for a, him to come out feel his stomach say he's constipated and give him a sedative right when the other horse that we had to have put down had colic a painkiller injection a lethal injection a truck uh, a cremation um, and all that sort of stuff only came seven hundred and fifty. I know. I know. Only it's not. It's not only is it not. It's not a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But when you think about the difference between the two, the stuff involved with having the other one put down, moved, and everything, and then giving it, I said, you know, giving it a couple of, um, you know, pills or liquids or whatever, and uh, feeding its stomach, the difference in pro, you know, is not massive really. But they're two massively different things. You know, and massively other involved, and they've gone with a bloody goal. And didn't even show any emotion when Mella put his 3 1 up. Oh, that's impressive, though. Impressive that we're winning away at Barnet. I've got a feeling there's a possibility of an equaliser coming. To be fair, let's send Roger Johnson on for the last bit. And uh, let's give Ash a run out. So yeah, um, and then, but then when we took our rabbit to the dentist, uh, to the dentist, to the, um, I could take him to the dentist, I guess, they have pretty big teeth, to the vets, because he uh, he wasn't eating. Uh, oh, get in, Atkin, super sub. See, I'm, I'm a genius sometimes, I really am. <laughs> nice tidy finish. Uh, yeah, we took him because he wasn't eating, and it turns out that his tooth, uh, a bit of his tooth had grown in an opposite direction and when he was chewing down he was chewing his tongue in half which is painful so they um, they filed his tooth down and gave us some antibiotics and that came to 400 pounds 
No, sorry, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. That's a lie. That's something else that came to four hundred pounds. Um, it was one hundred and fifty pounds or one hundred and eighty pounds, actually, including um, the tablets. So, for a tiny little rabbit to have a bit of his too far down and given some tablets, it was one hundred and eighty pounds. For a massive whopping horse, I mean, they don't do him in feet; they do him in hands, and he's nearly twenty hands tall, eighteen, nineteen hands tall. So he's a big horse, and it's a big size. But that was only two hundred and fifty pounds. Now my dog, who is the size of a small horse to be fair, he's six foot one on his back legs, he's a big lad. We took him to the house, to the vets once because it wasn't long after, we had him when he was seven months and we brought him back I and mean, he'd been here a couple of months. And I came downstairs and he was screaming. I'm just gonna pause this to jump to the next game, by the way. Back. So that's the team I've gone with. Uh, Grant's in. Stuart drops to the bench uh, and that's it really I think Lowe's in I can't, don't think Greg Taylor played last game and Johnson's in for Oakley uh, and Berry's back in for Taylor so yeah anyway so the dog was screaming right? I'm not like talking howling I mean screaming like really screaming and uh, I thought he'd broken his leg or something he was just laying on the floor and he couldn't get up and he's a big dog you know and we had to like, I had to lift him up I had to ring my wife and sort of say look she was at work I was off at the time and uh, I was like look he's there's something seriously wrong so she came out of work and uh, came home and we took him to the vets and they were like yeah this seems bad you know he couldn't touch his leg without him like he's, he's a very soft dog but like he just brushed his leg and he'd sort of snap at you and uh so um, they put him in for an x-ray and stuff and you know they had to conk him out put him in an x-ray machine and everything so we went away and we were worrying all day thinking oh he's going to have broken his leg and it's, you know we're going to have to having a plaster is going to be really hard for him to sort of cope because he's such a big dog and all this and other and we went back and um, the ladies at our vets uh, the household pets are Polish uh, really nice ladies but uh, she had to call the other vet in uh, to tell us what was wrong and basically they reeled off this they says oh yeah he's got this blah, 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 you know this really long name and we were like huh? and then the other one went basically he's got growing pains <laughs> he, he, you know he's just having growing pains it's a thing with um, blue blood dogs he's, he's sort of you can look this up on the internet if you're interested he's half Italian Spinoni um, and our half otter hound uh, so you know he's part blue blood dog which is like they say royal dog or whatever it is I don't know what class that is get in 2 nil. get in um, so this is common and they showed us an x-ray of one leg and it was full whereas the leg that was in pain it was hollow all the way down the middle so his bone was still growing but because of the size of the dog apparently it's just excruciating pain so they gave us these tablets which the dog loved and then they gave us the bill 870 pounds 870 pounds Wiley hat trick get him my son and he is smaller than a horse but they did roughly the same sort of stuff that they did to the horse I mean the x-ray would add a little bit on to it I know but it cost 850 pounds so I reckon they just make it up as they go along that's what I that's just what I wanted to get off my chest so I bored you to tears telling you about horses dogs and rabbits um, but yeah now I swear to god they just make it up as they go along we're doing well in this match aren't we very pleased keep it up you're looking fit ish at the moment but yeah my work yesterday when all the horse stuff went on i said i might need to leave a bit early because um you know to when the vet comes out you know my wife only has so much uh, money at the moment in her account uh and i have the rest in mind we don't do shared accounts we uh we never have done never will do Go on, Davison. 
Oh, penalty, surely. Yes, penalty. Go on, Davison, you're brought down, you take it. You'll miss, probably, but go on, get some, get some. Oh, get in, snuck it past the keeper. Um, yeah, so I said to him, I have to go to pay. And their response was, no, you will not. You will not leave this office just for an animal. Uh-huh. That's what I... I went fecking mental because... Well, I didn't start off with, actually. I was just a bit annoyed. Um, because it's hard to for me to understand it. It's still hard. But for my wife, these horses, she's been with them since she was like seven eight nine you know she's grew up with them um and the attachments there and it you know every day of her life those horses have been there it's one of them for the past 25 years um um this one for the past 19 20 years so it's a long period of life to be attached to something and for her in a way i suppose because we don't have children yet or possibly may never, I don't know. But, um, you know, it, it's kind of, in a way, her children. And she would be heartbroken. She was last time. She was really hurt when she had to have it put down, um, the other one. You know, it really hurt her. And I thought, well, oh, she shouldn't have to go through it alone. I don't care what people think. If you think it's stupid, then, you know, fair, whatever. I don't really care what people think. Um, so, anyway, a little bit later on, my boss... Well, no, she's not my boss, but she's one of the bosses in the office who um, I needed to OK it and who didn't. Came up to me, and, and she, I was sat with a couple of the women at the time, and she really insincerely went, Oh... I'm so sorry I couldn't agree to let you go, you know, but, you know, we we need you here and all this rubbish, right? So um, I was like, don't worry about it, whatever, don't worry about it. I was annoyed, but uh, I was just like, yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter, forget it. Just trying to, you know, keep calm and just not worry about anything. But then she goes... But if you need to just take an hour, we can, you know, we can sort something out. You can perhaps make it up next week. So I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So she goes and sits down. Literally three minutes have passed, three or four minutes. So I emailed her and said, um, well, the, we need to pay the vets today. Um, you know, I've said I could nip in. They're closing at five, um, but they're over the other side of somewhere. Um, town called Nuneaton so it's a long way to jotty over on a Friday evening when people are rushing to go home from work so can I take that hour and go at four get over there pay it she replies no right, after just saying if you need to take an hour no problem and the bloody crawly game's off again oh my god anyway I will finish this once I've paused it and got to a frigging game that is Friggin' on at our ground. Oxford, Saturday. Let's see if we can get this on. Bear with me. We have success. We have a game on. At home. Thank God for that. Right. So, I'll just finish the story up quickly. Because I've bored you enough. So, she replies. Right. Literally, as I said, a few minutes. Four, five minutes. After... Um, saying I could take an hour and make it up next week so I asked for it to leave an hour early to get it sorted she said and I quote can you rearrange this for another day right because it's too short notice mm-hmm I went Friggin mental. I stood up, I shouted, I swore, I called her a stupid, fat, pathetic excuse for a human being with the compassion of a stone. And I just went on and I, and I just, in the end, said, you know what? Fuck you. I am done. Turned around and walked out the office. Hmm. 
I chucked my teddy out the pram big to start. Not because they wouldn't let me go, but because she literally said in front of people just before that I could take the hour, you know, to go sort it out. And then she turned around five minutes later and said, you can't, it's too short notice. And I was angry. And you see, I wouldn't mind, but I do a lot for them. A lot more than what uh, what I am contractually meant to do. Um, I help out in way, you know, doing things that really is other people's jobs and stuff. And I know everybody does in work these days. I'm not saying it worries me, but you know, I do more than my fair share there. I do more than what she does. That's for sure. Um, so uh, I was I was furious and you know in a way you know they've been really good to me they've let me have time off um, with personal things in the past and if one of the other ladies had have been there one of the other managers it wouldn't have been a problem you know I mean I'm a manager there myself and it wouldn't have been a problem for me to let somebody go but when when these people who are useless and she is useless I'm not just saying that because of yesterday I've thought this from day one that she was appointed uh, and um, so have many many others when somebody so useless gets promoted to a certain level they get a power complex and it's hard hard to shift it from their tiny minds and uh, that's the case with this so in the end I didn't get to sort it out my wife's dad had to sort it out for me and then I had to sort him out with the money afterwards um, but it has put into perspective the fact that uh, no matter what I do at, for my company at work no matter what good things I do it counts for nothing when you need something in return nothing at all so I've decided to um, in the new year go for a new challenge go somewhere else I've got these football badges sitting doing uh, football coaching badges sitting doing nothing and maybe it's time now maybe the time has come in my life to um, you know Put them to good use um, but we'll see we will see what comes up and what happens in life well that's story time over so I'm sorry I bored you to tears but um, this game isn't very riveting is it but we've had a good uh, a good couple of games good couple of wins but uh, this game is looking very difficult at the moment. They're playing some good stuff. We're down to 10 men. And they're going to score. Told you. <laughs> it's disallowed though. We're alright. Assistant referee had his flag out. So we're alright. What we could do again the goal. We really could do again the goal. My emails have come through telling me my two videos today have gone live. Yeah, that was about an hour ago. Oh, for God's sake, win all again. Oh, well, I might have to tap this on the chin, I think. There's not much else we can do, really. Oh, I keep knocking the microphone today. It's very annoying. Oh, slow that was to defend in there. Oh, you what? Oh, just ran past it. We've got all seating in our little ground now, which is pretty good. Cool. Wow, well, that was a disappointing return to the Green King. Very disappointing indeed. But you can't win them all, can you? As much as we want to and we'd like to, we cannot win them all. Anyway, 
on that disappointing and depressing note I will bid you a farewell we're still top of the league by a point with two games in hand Oxford are second so you know that explains a lot Bolton Bolton look they've got 13 points now closing that gap slowly is it too slow though that's the question we'll find out in the next video which will be the end of season video where will we be where will they be where will anybody be well unless actually unless we make the JPT final then there'll probably be a video for that but um, who knows what will come of the next few hours but uh, stay tuned and you will find out what goodness is occurring thank you very much for your time thank you very much for your effort on sharing liking commenting it's much appreciated and we will see you all every last one of you i hope in the next episode see you guys